Hey everyone, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 53 of This Week in Board Games. This is a special episode of Funko Ben Con 2.0. What is Funko Ben Con? Last year, we started a tradition where I fly to Vegas and visit my cousins for a weekend, Will and Amy, who are really into board games. Hang out with them and their kids and play board games all weekend. Why is it called Funko Ben Con? because I'm not technically their uncle, I'm their fake uncle because they're my cousin's kids. So they call me Funko Ben. We played 21 games, 14 different games. Most of this video will be a vlog from Funko Ben Con. Check it out. I just landed in Vegas for Funko Ben Con and I am headed to prank Will and Amy's kids now. The boys don't know I'm coming this weekend, it's a surprise. So I'm going into the grocery store and I'll pretend like I'm browsing for drinks on the drink aisle. Amy's gonna bring them around the corner and they're gonna run into me. I'm gonna set a GoPro up on the shelf and surprise them. Did I scare you? Yes. <laughs> First game of Funko Benton is King Domino. Ah. Uh, so I get this one. I'm teaching Will and Amy the mind. What do you guys think so far? I think it's pretty fun and really interesting. It's Amber alert. <laughs> Flash flood warning. Any other oh, flash flood warning? Yeah. Alright. Flash flood averted. What did, what were you saying, Will? <laughs> I said it's different than any other game I've played. It's interesting. It's really fun. There's a lot of staring. Thank yeah, you. that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Is that his backup beeping? Yes. <laughs> What you got there, Joe? <laughs> We're playing Raise Your Goblets. It's just a quick little game where you're trying to poison each other's wine glasses and mix them around and confuse people and hopefully stay alive and kill your target. I have a prediction that both Payton and Ben are going to die. <gasps> bum, Let's see bum, you first. Bum. All right. Oh! oh Payton is so oh, dead. Dead, dead. Get a point for Payton. Amy lives. Let's see if I die. So, let's see. Ben, you got that. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, I so get a point dead. for Ben. Yeah, what? What is this? Nuh uh. Stop it. You did not I make did. this. That. Oh my gosh, hold it up. That is awesome. I love it. Oh my gosh, thank you. You're welcome. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. It took me a year. <laughs> I believe it. This is amazing. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. Will and Amy are teaching us Valeria Card Kingdoms. It's kind of like Machi Koro where you buy these cards and then when dice are rolled, you get those resources. But the cool thing about it is that both of them, so if I rolled, for example, a six and a three, I would get the payout for the three, the six, and the nine. All right, I'm going to take my turn now. A four and a two. So I have no two, but I have a four. 
So I get a blue and a red. And then some of the cards will have two payouts. What you get on your turn, and then what everyone else gets on their, uh, if it's not their turn. And then for the six, I get a red. And now I can spend all this stuff. Saturday, and we started the day off with Deep Sea Adventure. This is a fun little push your luck game where you're diving and you're diving down off the boat here trying to get treasure from the bottom here, which are worth points. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Nothing. <laughs> Did you have fun? Uh -huh. What did you think of Deep Sea Adventure? I think it was really good. Yeah, it was amazing. Last year at Funko Ben Con, Will made us all badges. He 3D printed them. He has a new 3D printer this year that can print much larger and much faster things. You can see it in action behind me here. He's printing commemorative coins for Funko Ben Con 2.0. I'm excited to see how they turn out. The coins are done. Let's check them out. Let me see. Funko Ben Con 2.0. I'm not sure what happened to the audio here. We went down to a local game store called Shall We Play? Check it out. Any game store that has a shelf of classics that includes Catan, Dominion, Five Tribes, Machi Koro, Santorini, gets a thumbs up in my book for sure. They had a bunch of card games. Tons and tons of games here. This place was so cool. They even have Gloomhaven. I guess that's in stock now. Some tables out front where you can play games. Role playing stuff. Paint for painting all your miniatures. Hi. What are we playing, Peyton? Code names Marvel. In code names, you give one word clues so that they can try and guess which code names relate to your cards on the table. Here's the last clue: hole one. Good job, Peyton. Yay! I won. So, Will. Yes. What did you think of Marvel versus regular code names? I think that it is really good if you're a Marvel fan. If you're not, then there's going to be a lot left here for you that just isn't going to work out real well. I struggled with some of the cards because they're very obscure references. Next game up is Potion Explosion. Potion Explosion is kind of like Candy Crush in board game form. You're taking marbles from here, which are ingredients, to complete these potions, which you can later drink for special abilities. So I'm gonna take my turn now, and I'm gonna drink this potion, which allows me to take one ingredient from the dispenser. So I'm going to pull this one out here. Now, I'm gonna pull this one out which gives me these three reds since they hit each other. They all collide and cause an explosion. Now I put all these on my potions and try and fill my orders. I completed this potion. These go back in the dispenser. And now I get a new potion and that is one turn of potion explosion. Next we played Century Eastern Wonders. This game was fun. I liked it a lot more than Century Spice Road. We we're playing automobiles. Will and Amy have this. They're at teaching me it's a bag builder you get all these different colored cubes and then move, move your car around the track it's pretty fun and I'm gonna take a turn now because I'm in the last place I'm doing terrible but because of that I can move five light gray spaces so I'm gonna go one two three four five dark gray here black here dark gray here light gray here and now I'm gonna use this purple to draw one more out of my bag, and it's a light gray, so I'm gonna go one more space, and I'm gonna use this yellow to get rid of a yellow. And 
And then I had to take five wear because I drove my car so much. And the wear are these garbage cubes that clog up your bag. Then we played Rock Paper Wizard, which is this silly game where you do rock paper and then cast a spell at someone and you're trying to push everyone back so that you're ahead of them and get points. After that, we played some Resistance Avalon. Next game up for us is Unearth. Will's teaching us this game. I really enjoy it. It's a dice rolling game. You roll dice and you put them on these cards and then if you roll a one, two, or three, you can get one of these hex tiles and build your little kingdom or whatever it's called here. You get a payout for a low dice to get these tiles, but the high dice will get you the cards, which will get you points at the end of the game. This is my first time. Uh, I, I like the game. It's fun. We just finished playing Exit, the Polar Station, and it was kind of tricky. I am about half a year younger than it's recommended for. What age does it say? 12 and up. It took us about two hours and a half to finish and we got seven stars. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was really fun. We liked Unearth so much that we played it again. What do you like about it, Will? I like that you get to roll a lot of dice, which is fun, but you get to really count on the odds and there's not terrible rolls. You may not get what you want, but you can always do something with it. And so that's what I like about it is there's always something to do, there's always something to build towards, and it's just fun to try to calculate everything in your head and see if you can come up with what you need. Next, we played some Mechs vs. Minions. Alright, here we go. Omni Stomp 2, Cyclotron, nobody, Fuel Tank, Speed six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Chain lightning, three, that one, plus three, two, one, two, three. Nice. And then fuel tank. Let's run this way. In The Wizard Always Wins, you take turns selecting roll cards, which do different things like draw cards, draw tokens out of a bag, collecting cards, leveling up, eventually putting your colored gems into the bag. When you take the wizard roll, you draw tokens equal to the number of level that you're on, and if you draw yours, you win. You're level six? Yep. Uh, what was the token? One. Nope. Two! I did it! Woohoo! Is that it? Red wins? Red wins. We finished up with some good old-fashioned Liar's Dice. This 3D commemorative coin that Will 3D printed is really cool. I've got this from Funko Bencon 2.0, and the blanket that my cousin made is seriously amazing. And you saw a little bit of it in the video. Eh, it's hard to get the whole thing in frame. My cousin runs a blog, also an Instagram and Twitter account, her handle is Homemaker Hobbies. Go check her out. I'll link it in the description. As far as news goes, the Spiel des Jahres was announced this week and went to Azul. I thought Azul was going to win it. It beat out The Mind and Luxor. I've played The Mind. It's a great game, but I agree that Azul was better. I have not played Luxor yet. It's not going to hit the US till later this year. The Kenner Spiel des Jahres, which is the connoisseur board game of the year, went to a game called Quacksabler. Quacksalber? All right some German word, I'm guessing. Never heard of it, don't know what it's about. Maybe it'll hit the US later this year, we'll see. That's all I had for the news this week. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. What games are you playing? Also, are there any games that you would like to see spotlighted? If so, leave them in the comments below. Thanks guys, and we'll see you next week, bye. This little Easter egg is for Joe, Ethan, and Peyton. Searching low, searching high. Look where all the little ones die. There you'll find your big surprise.